Hey there everybody, PT Pop here, all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And welcome back to PT Pop on my YouTube channel here. And uh, Call Center Survivor, this is a new Call Center Survivor video. And the other day, I was going through my hard drive on my, on my Mac, and I discovered two videos I recorded where I was interviewed for a call center position three years ago. And this is the last call center I ever worked in. And I remember recording it because I had this idea at the time that I was going to use this in a video. I was kind of going to use this company kind of as a guinea pig to try to document everything that happened. And this is the first process of it, but I never went through with the rest of it. But this is the interviews. I My first interview on the phone for this call center I had applied for a job for. And then the call back after I got a phone interview. Then I, the next day after the phone interview, I went in at 9 a.m. to be interviewed by a couple people live and in person. And then the very day after that interview, I got a call and had the job offered to me. So this is proof to you what goes on during a call center interview, at least on the phone. And if keep. keep be aware of the woman that called me. She's very perky. She's very upbeat. She's very funny. She's got a laugh on the edge of her lips. And everything she says, ha, ha, ha. You know, she's, oh, hey, everybody. Oh, and she's also, when she says goodbye, she goes, bye-bye. Kind of breathy like that. Um, she's very friendly, very nice. Uh, most of what, a lot of what she told me in this um, interview, uh, I'm not certain if it was a lie. But she said it was four weeks of training. My training was actually a week and a half, and then they put us on the phones. And they, they said that the training continued while we were on the phones. They said that was part of my training was being on the phones. So so this, this, is the, this is the last call center I worked for. This is my initial phone interview. And then the uh, second call I got to offer me the position. So take a watch. See what you think of this. In two, and I was only there for six months, and then I moved to Arizona. Okay, okay, okay. But other than that, you haven't had any kind of employment relationships or interactions at all with uh, with other than you know, like you said, fifteen years ago. No, no, not at all. No. Okay, okay. All right. Now, um, how did you hear about this job? Then, do you uh, do you remember? Yeah, it was on the Cleveland Plain Dealer puts out. Um, the, the top places to work in mm -hmm. in Ohio, and I was lo looking at a list from 2016, and it was listed as one of the top places to work in the area. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, good. Now, the starting rate of pay for this position is $12.50 per hour. Are you able to accept that rate of pay? Yeah, that's, that's, that's with, is that with full benefits, 401k and, and health care? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's actually pretty good for this area. Okay, good. That's good. great. Yeah. Now, uh, as, uh, the way we have this position set up is when you first start, you're going to go through training. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a four weeks of paid training starting on your first day, and the next class that we have starting, the next training class in Akron is the eighth of May. That's a couple weeks from now. Um, if we extended an offer to you, are you able to start on that date? That's the eighth of May. Yeah. Yeah, I can start then. Okay. All right. Then, as far as the hours and the scheduling, it is a full time position. I know you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, the schedule for the training class is also full time. Now, when you're in training, the hours are Monday through Friday from eight until five. Very normal business hours for those first few weeks while you're in training. Okay. Once you get out of training, that's when you're going to start to work what we call your permanent shift, and those hours are a little different. In Akron, we're actually open seven days a week. So most of the schedules that we have available do include a weekend day as part of your normal schedule. Now, the trade-off there is that you're going to get a day off in the middle of the week instead. And we work with set schedules. So you'll have the same five days on and the same two days off every week and mm -hmm. night and consistent. Okay. So, now, do you have pretty open shift availability, or do you already know that there's certain days or times that you are just not available to work? No, no, I, I'm wide open. Okay, okay. And you 
are able to work a weekend day as part of your normal schedule. Oh yeah, as well. Is yeah. That right? Okay. Un- unless the Browns make it to the Super Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm not coming to work. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm should... sure we can make an exception for you. If that happens. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. Now, if you were to be offered this position, you would be required to complete a pre-employment drug test as well as a criminal background check. Are those both things that you're going to be comfortable with? Yeah, that's that's perfect. That's fine. Okay. Okay. One of the things that our drug test looks for specifically is levels of codeine in your system. That's associated with tobacco and nicotine use. The reason will no longer hire anyone who is an active tobacco or nicotine user. So is that also something that you're going to be comfortable with? Yeah, I've never smoked my whole life, so. Okay, okay. All right, I'm a little stunned with all this HR stuff now. Um, <laughs> due, to the fact that our, <laughs> due to the fact that our training program is so crucial to your success, we are not able to accommodate any paid or unpaid time off during the training period. Um, any paid time off that you need after training would still need to be approved. So do you believe that you'll be able to meet those attendance requirements? It's, it's from May 8th till June 8th for training. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Good, good. Well, those are all my questions. I told you this was going to be pretty quick. Okay. Um, what I really want to do here is I want to see if we can get you scheduled to go into our office to sit down with one of the supervisors and really learn a whole lot more about the job that way. So um, would you be available tomorrow morning? Um, let me see here. What what time? I have a time slot open right at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, I can do 9. Okay, perfect. What I'm going to do, Peter, is I'm going to send you an email confirmation for this interview. In this email, I'll include all the details that you're going to need. That is perfect, yes. Okay, perfect. I will send you all the details there. Were there any other questions that you had for me right now while we still got each other on the phone? Sure. Is this is this a position that you currently um, work or have worked in? Or is this something I can ask you in-depth questions about? You, you can try. I haven't specifically been in this position. Um, I have been hiring folks for this position for about two and a half years now, and I've sat in on, on a lot of the, the calls and kind of the, the daily things. I sit right in the middle of the phone bank up here in Holland, so oh. I've picked up on a lot. But anything I don't know, I'll you know I'll tell you I don't know it, and then you can put that on your list for tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any sales with the position or upselling? Uh, you know that that's a good question. There is the you're going to have the opportunity to do some upselling if you choose to, um, but you're not going to be required to do it in in this specific position that we're hiring you into right now. Really, your focus here is on customer service. Um, but if you've got a customer on the phone and you're looking at their account information and you realize that they've got you know thirty five thousand dollars in their checking account, and they may need to look at some other options. You know, as far as a savings account. You, you're going to have the empowerment and the information that you need to go ahead and go down that path with those folks. Um, and there are commissions and bonuses and those kinds of things that you'll be able to qualify for if you do that. Um, but your your main performance metrics in this position is going to be stuff like quality, uh, schedule adherence, which is more or less your attendance. Uh, that those are the kinds of things that you're really going to be um, uh, you know, measured on in this position. Mm-hmm. Now, we do have another uh, customer service associate position within the phone bank that is more sales focused. We have a lot of those folks. Uh, these folks do have quotas, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but they also earn quite a bit more in commission. So if that was something you wanted to move into, you could absolutely look at doing that. Okay, no, I was I was hoping to steer away from sales and just kind of straight okay. customer service. Yeah, um, and if that's not what you want to do, then you're not going to have to. So. Okay, that's cool. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, how many systems are there now that I'd have to acclimate myself with? Uh, it's just systems now. Um, I don't I don't know a number, so maybe hang on to that one for uh, for Scott if, when you meet with him tomorrow. Okay. Um, Okay, so are there any of the older DOS systems? Um, they're like old mainframe systems that most of the banks use, which are like a black and white or monochrome screen where you need to put in like five or six codes to go from one screen to the next. That's a good question for Scott. I will tell you, I see 
people on screens like that here in in the in the culture. It looks like a DOS system. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what kind of coding. What you know? What they really need to be typing in there. I'm, I'm not That's quite okay. Sure. Yeah, I'll wait yeah. now. I'll I'll finish the rest of my questions tomorrow because I kind of okay. just that. That's fine. Okay. Okay. No, those are, those are fantastic questions. Scott's gonna love it. So um, <laughs> okay. I will. I'll shoot it to his Outlook calendar nine o'clock tomorrow, the nineteenth. And uh, I'm sending you the email right now. Awesome. I, that's great. And that's tomorrow at 9 a.m., right? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks, Peter. Good All right. Tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. Okay. Bye. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye-bye. What I really wanted to do is I wanted to follow up and see how everything went with your interview that you had. Uh, what was it, yesterday? Yeah. How did it go? Yeah, it went well. I, I, I met with and he was really nice. I, I was really impressed with the call center and the way he said they train. And it just really was a nice environment, I thought. Good. Good, good. And were, were you able to get all of your questions answered? Yes. Yeah, he was really, really thorough. Right now, am I right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm interested, definitely. Okay. Okay. Well, I do have some good news for you. Um, I actually had a call earlier today. Okay. Um, and he had shot me an email yesterday, but he thought the interview went very well as well. Oh, good. And we'd like to go ahead and formally extend an offer to you for one of the open positions. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, so what do you think? Are you able to accept the position right now? Yeah, yeah, I can accept it. Are you going to send an offer letter or something like that? The first thing that you and I need to do, though, is we need to select what your shift schedule is going to be as soon as you get out of your training class, because this is also something I'm going to make sure that we get into your offer letter. So, okay. um, I have the list of available shifts in front of me now, and I looked at my notes from when you and I talked about this the other day, and you said that you're pretty open, you're flexible, uh, you don't have anything, you know, that's kind of holding you back as far as uh, days and, and hours, is that right? No, I, I don't have anything right now, no. Okay, okay. Well, um, as uh, I'm looking at what I still have available, and I have three schedules <laughs> that are still available right now, we've been making a lot of offers, um, all of these schedules are in afternoons. Now, uh, the earliest one starts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It goes until 11.30 at night. That one, it works Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then it has Thursday off. It works on Friday, and then it has Saturday off. Now, that schedule comes with an 8% shift differential. What that means is once you get out of your training and you start working those hours, your base rate is going to uh, bump up from $12.50. It's going to go up to $13.50 an hour. Um, that's some additional compensation that we do um, since you are working outside of standard business hours. Sure. Now, the other two schedules that I have are just 30 minutes later, they from 3.30 in the afternoon until 12 o'clock midnight. <laughs> that, that jump, that jump in time actually bumps the shift diff up to 10% for those two schedules. So that makes your base rate 13.75 an hour. Um, now, from those two, they one of them works on Saturday, one of them works on Sunday. Um, the one that works on Sunday, your days off are Saturday and Tuesday. Um, the one that works on Saturday, your days off are Sunday and Wednesday. So, okay. what what are you leading toward right now? What do you think makes the most sense for you? Um, let me look at something here real quick. Do you, you don't have that's anything that's early. You don't have anything that's earlier than that. I don't. No, I don't. So everything, everything. We did have some earlier shifts, but those have all been selected already. Um, we do this on a first come, first serve basis. Yeah, it's that the I only understand. Fair, it's the only fair way to do it. So. No, that's fine. I got a quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, mentioned You're fine. mentioned a bonus. Um, if you meet all of your um, your stats for your fo your phone stats, am I eligible for that? Um, you mean a, a bonus for, for your performance e metrics? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. 
Perfect. Perfect. Good. Well, congratulations again. Thanks. And uh, I'm sure you hear me typing. I'm getting your offer details put together, and I'll get this sent over to you here in just a few minutes. All right. Sounds great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks. Have a good day. Okay. Yes. You too. All right. Bye. So that's it. That was my interview with uh, a call center for a call center job that I took several years ago, almost four years ago now. And uh, I just wanted you to get an idea of how perky the people are when they call their less. They're so perky. They're so breathy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Twelve fifteen hour. Are you good with that? Are you good with that, baby? <laughs> they try to seduce you. They try to make it sound so sexy. You're going to be working for basically peanuts with benefits, second shift, and you'll never get off that shift again. You'll never work a job again where you have weekends off. You'll be a slave to this call center. That's what it ends up being, believe it or not. You may not believe me, but it's the truth. So if you've worked in call centers, you get these phone calls. I had I had the phone call. I had the interview the next day. I was hired. I was phone call interview and hired in three days, well, less than three days, actually in 48 hours, which I knew in the pit of my stomach, I'm like, but that happened awful fast. I should run. I should run. I should have gotten out of there. So, but that's, that's one of my authentic interviews. That's a real person working for a company here in Northeast Ohio. And uh, that's what the interview was like. And that's, that's some of the the lies they tell and uh, what they do to you when they try to get you to work in a call center. They, they spin it. They make it sound good. You're going to get a bonus. You're going to work second shift, but we're going to give you a 10% shift differential with bonuses. And you never. it was impossible to reach the bonuses. After I'd been there 90 days, they took me out of customer service without even asking if I wanted to, and they put me in a whole different department that I wasn't trained for. They didn't train me for it. Um, the, the talk time should have been adjusted, and it wasn't. I was supposed to be signing people up for... I was, it was for the internet service to work on the uh, calls with people trying to open up internet accounts. And the, my first call that day, they put me on it, was 45 minutes long. My talk time was still seven minutes. They didn't train me for it all, and I, I quit. I quit the job right after that happened to me. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope this gave you some true insight, not just a mock, mock phone interview like I do here where I make them up or uh, – you know, I'm just being sarcastic. This was the real thing. So I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Stay COVID-free, baby. <laughs>